in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you always thank you for watching be blessed hallelujah make sure you're worshiping the king of kings hallelujah hallelujah it means halal yeshua praise the lord hallelujah sing hallelujah For your prayers and song, for your glory, Lord, for your power, Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Sing, you are worthy. You are worthy. Take the glory, Lord. Take the glory. Take the glory, Lord. Take the glory. Ba 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 ba. Se na na ma ya na 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 na. Ba ba ya na ma. rising from your spirit. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I adore you. Shamada la maniera da 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 da. Bottom of our hearts, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Now here's the part I want you to sing with revelation. Lord, I'll serve you. It's not compulsory. You only sing it when you mean it. Lord, I'll serve you. Oh, yes, Lord, I will serve you for the rest of my life. Lord, I'll serve you. With every breath that I have within me. Lord, I'll serve you. Can you sing it again? Lord, I'll serve you. Lord, I'll serve you. Lord, I'll serve you. Lord, I'll serve you. Lord, I'll serve you.
Lord, I pray that Koinonia will never become a place of religion. I pray that this place will never be the place of ceremony. It will never be the place of pretense and hypocrisy. That Lord will not just celebrate crowds and excellence. But that lives will truly be changed. We desire your presence. You are not joking with us. Hallelujah. Never listen to me. Never come for koinonia simply because you want to honor a religious ceremony. Hallelujah. This is not a church. This is a training ground where God is raising and building on common people. Men and women who will love his presence more than their lives. Men and women who love his glory. The Bible says the remnant of the house of Jacob shall bear root downwards. Men and women who will have a passion for God beyond their lives. I hunger and thirst for you. In a dry and weary land, so all I want is you. I hunger and thirst, I hunger and thirst for you. In a dry and weary land, for all I want is you. Is that your prayer tonight? Is that your desire in this place? We hunger and thirst for you in the dry and weary land. All we want is you. Let that be a song from your spirit. Hey, we hunger and thirst for you in the dry. the voices I'd like you to sing it from your heart we hunger and we thirst we hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land all we want is you sing it from your heart I hunger and I thirst for you I hunger and thirst for you Try and we relax. All, all, all I want is you. All I want is you. All I want is you. You are my life. You are my breath. You are everything I want. You are all that I see. You're all that's in my world. I love your word and I love your life. I live by your word. I live by your word. You are the hunger and the thirst inside of me. I'll spend my days seeking your presence. I'll spend my life running after you. Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, with everything I have, with everything I have, with everything I have, this is a piece of my passion for you, Lord, I love you, Lord, I serve you, I love you more than life itself, I truly love you. 
love your way. I love your presence. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I love you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I love your presence. Holy Spirit. You are my life. You are my breath. You are my joy. You're my song in the night. You're my song in the day. You're my song in the night. You're the reason why I live. You're the reason why I preach. You're the reason why I heal. You're the reason why I sing. You're the reason why I serve you. As the day pants for the world, so my soul longs after you. So my soul longs after you. I love you more than life itself. I can never do without you, Lord. Hallelujah. Listen to this song. With all my heart, with all my heart, I worship you. With all my heart. I don't know if you really love the Lord. Let's raise our voices together. It's a very simple song. from your heart. This is part of the meeting. This is part of Koinonia. Lord, we worship you. I worship you. We know my heart. Can you hold your hands together and lift it up? Together as a family, I like us to sing and say, Lord, we worship you. We Please sing it from your heart. We are not pretending. This is our testimony that we love the Lord. We worship you with all our heart. Just the voices. with all our hearts. This is our testimony, O oh Lord. This is our testimony, Lord. We love you. We are that generation, O oh God. We will not disappoint destiny with all our heart. We are that remnant that will come out of the house of Jacob. One more time. We worship you. The training must be hard. It may be hard, but we will go through it. The making of general. With all our hearts. One more time as you hold the hands of your neighbor, a fellow general in the army. Sing it from your heart. It's the outcome of the great ones. We worship you. We 
Just sing in the spirit, still holding the hands of your neighbor, expressing your love to his majesty. We love your presence, oh God. We're not just looking to get things from you. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. With everything we have, with everything we are. We love you, Lord. Come on, sing in the spirit. That we love you. That we love you. We love you. Yes, Lord, we love you. Lord, I will bow to you to no other God but you alone. You're singing it to your maker. Lord, I will worship you. Nothing hands has made but you, Lord. Sing, I will lay down my idol. I will lay down my idol. Bones I have made. And all that I've taken. My heart. Sing it from your heart to the Lord. to me when I began my pursuit for God listen I was not looking for ministry I was not looking for prosperity I was not looking for fame I was not looking for influence I was not even looking for anointing I was not looking for title I was looking for his presence I wanted his presence more than my life I wanted his presence more than anything. When I began to pursue him, I didn't give him conditions to serve him. I told him, I said, Lord, if you will never bless me, I cannot leave you. We have conditional Christians. Lord, if you do this for me, I will do that. But one of the blessings of Koinonia is that you come to a point where you say, Lord, I lift away the conditions. I love you. I love you. The language of love for God is not a language that is understood by the body again. We teach on faith. We teach on mercy. We teach on goodness. But we do not teach on our love and our passion. There is need to restore a passion for God. I don't know what you look for every time you come for koinonia. Miracles, anointing. But tonight, can you renew your passion for his presence? Oyedeko said, if you want to know the secret of my success, find out my heartbeat for God. A.W. Toza wrote in his book, The Pursuit for God. He said, the highest, singular, noble cause of any man is to pursue God. As the deep panted for the waters of my soul 
longs after you. Make sure you are thinking of what you are singing. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. Listen to me. Let me give you a revelation of this song so that you understand what the psalmist was saying. Hallelujah. The deer is a very fragile animal. Are you listening to me? Doesn't have so much strength of its own. It's a great prey to the lions and other stronger animals. Now listen to me. Very important. And every time there is a secretion from the deer that attracts the presence of the predators and the animals that come to eat it up. Are you listening to me? And the only place of rescue is if it can get to the waters. Are you listening to me? And so, for the deer, water is a matter of life and death. This is why the psalmist is saying, as the deer pants, he's not looking for the water because he's thirsty. He's looking for the water as a matter of life and death. Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth to it and they are saved. So as you are singing and say as the deer, you are comparing your pursuit for God to the deer's pursuit for water. If you don't mean it, don't sing it. That as the deer pants after the water, so my soul pants after it. For you Oh Lord, ah, my heart desire and I long to worship you. You, oh Lord, ah, my heart desire and I long to worship It's a very simple song. I don't know if you know it. I love to worship. I love to praise. I bow before you, lifting you high. I worship your holy name. I love to worship. I love to praise. I love to praise. I bow before you. I bow before you, lifting you high, lifting you high. I worship your holy name. I love to worship. I love to praise. I bow before you, lifting you high. I worship your holy name. I love to worship. I bow before you, lifting you high for the last time. Hey, I love to worship. I love to pray. I bow before you, lifting you high. Hallelujah. Lord, let your word bless us tonight. We have come to receive. We have come to be changed. Let your word bless us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. Just hug your neighbor and be gloriously seated. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you for coming. He will increase you and he will cause you to walk in glory. In the name of Jesus. Joel chapter 2. Please bring out your writing material. It's important that you come with your writing material because you will need to write a lot of things.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the King of glory. Lord, we love you. Joel chapter 2. If you are there, say amen. Verse 4. The appearance of them is like the appearance of horses. And like horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains, shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. Like a strong people set in battle array. 7. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one trust another. They shall walk every man on his path. They shall walk every man on his path. He said they shall walk every man on his path. Tonight's teaching is very important. It changed my life years ago when the Lord opened my eyes to this revelation and I pray that it will change somebody's life tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm teaching on a very powerful subject. Walking in your purpose. Walking in your purpose. walking in your purpose. The Bible begins to give us in the book of Joel a description of a great army. And the Bible makes us to understand that this army, they were like mighty men. They leaped upon walls. Hallelujah. The Bible says that every one of them, none broke their ranks. That every one of them walked in his path. Who are these men? This class of fearful people. Hallelujah. Every one of you say after me, I was born for a reason. Say it as loud as you can. I was born for a reason. I am not a biological accident. I'm not one of the many people in the earth. I was born for a reason. I have an assignment. I have a mandate. I have an anointing. I have a destiny. The world is full of people who found themselves in the middle of time. Didn't know why they were born and they die without discovering why they came upon the surface of the earth. There is nothing as tragic as a man who lives upon the surface of the earth without knowing the reason why he was born and what he was mandated to do upon the surface of the earth. Take this very seriously. Purpose and destiny. Tonight I trust that God will open up our eyes and grant us the ability to walk in the path of our call the part of our anointing and the part of destiny. Say amen if you believe that. Many of you have been praying and say, Lord, why am I here? Am I just here to escort others in destiny? The Lord has heard your prayer tonight. And that's why I want you to be very attentive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, the word purpose means the intention for creating or manufacturing a thing. When you say the purpose of a thing, the intent, the reason why you manufactured that product. Please, if you're not writing, you can kindly ask your neighbor to help you with a sheet of paper or use the notepads on your phone. Just make sure you are writing. This is very important. Hallelujah. So, the purpose of a thing is the reason for its existence. The reason why it came. Are you listening to me? Everything. God 
is a God of purpose. Say after me. God is a God of purpose. Yes, he does not create anything for nothing. God is a God who is driven by purpose and everything he creates is supposed to serve a reason. These amplifiers, these, these speakers are supposed to serve a purpose. The mic I'm holding is serving a purpose. Are you listening to me? The video camera is serving a purpose. The projector is serving a purpose. The worship team, they are serving a purpose. So, the purpose of a thing is the reason for its creation. The reason for its manufacturing. Hallelujah. It's important that we realize that God didn't just create man. Listen to me. To walk upon the surface of the earth, get old, get married, give birth to children, go to church, go to the university, earn degrees, and die. That's a terrible testimony. And that's the testimony of many people. Many people. There are so many young people, even in Nigeria, they do not understand the purpose of their lives. They do not realize that they did not appear on the earth as a biological accident. I don't care how you were born. Are you listening to me? It's irrelevant how you came into being. The most important thing is that you are here now. Hallelujah. It's important for you to find the original assignment and the intention of God for your life. Do you realize that every one of us has an assignment earmarked by God? It has been predetermined. Let me tell you something about purpose. Purpose is not the same as ambition. Ambition is your desire. Are you listening to me? What you aspire to become by reason of your likes, by reason of um, your environment and whatever parameters you use. Purpose is the intention that God put in your heart to serve here in the earth realm. When he shot you as an arrow from eternity into time, he packaged you for a reason. I need you to understand that you don't create your purpose, you discover it. You don't create purpose. Let me show you. Hebrews chapter 10. Turn with me quickly to Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 7. If we can get it on the Amplified, that will be okay. Otherwise, any version. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 7. Who is there? Hebrews 10. Verse 7. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will. Listen, he said, then I said, behold, here I am coming to do your will, O God, to fulfill what is written of me in the volume of the book. To fulfill what? What is written. It has been written. You don't come and walk here on the earth and then one day God just chooses and says, uh, what do we do with Bridget now? And then God just says, oh yeah, you just manage here. No, lo, I come as it is written of me. Say after me, it has been written concerning my life. That's why I know you cannot be a failure. God cannot write failure about you. The Bible says, lo, I come in the volume of the book as it has been written of me the day you find yourself in the book you begin to walk in the path of destiny hallelujah can i tell you something one definition of frustration in life is to walk void of the knowledge of your assignment you will waste energy you will waste resources. Are you listening to me? We used to play um, 
a little game during break when I was in primary school. Now, primary school children play computer games during break time. But we used to play a game. I don't know how many of you did it. You people will walk around and you come. I pass here, and what will you say? I pass here. That's how many people are doing in destiny. They just get everywhere. I like technical. I pass here, and life will say what? No way. Hallelujah. And there are so many people escorting others to the place of destiny. God designed that you find fulfillment when you begin to walk in your purpose. Are you listening to me? Your joy is in your purpose. Your peace is in your purpose. Your prosperity is in your purpose. Your fame and your influence is in your purpose. And the danger is this. If you do not find it, you will live your life getting offended and angry at those who have found it. Because you will aspire to become what they already are. But you will find out that the road you are taking will always end you up in frustration. One more time, say after me, I was born for a reason. I was born for a reason. Many of you, as you are saying it, you are laughing at yourself. You say, me too. Yes, you. In Luke chapter 4, from verse 17, the Bible makes us to understand that Jesus, do you realize, listen to me, that Jesus was a non-entity until the day he found his purpose? Is in your Bible. There was no, there was no proof that Jesus was an important person, that people loved him and valued him until the day when he found something. Luke chapter 4. You remain a non-entity in life. I don't care who you are. I don't care how fine you are. I don't care who your father is. Luke chapter 4, verse 17. Hallelujah. Are you there? Can someone read it for us, please? He said, and there was handed to him the role of the book of the prophet Isaiah. He said he opened the book and found the place. Hey, And found where? The place. There is a place for you. And he found the place. He didn't say he found a place. He opened the book. In the opening of the book, he did what? He found the place. The place. There is the place. It's not a place for many people. It's not a place for competition. You know why there's so much competition? Because many people are trying to be what a few people who have found their purpose have become. And the best you can become of another person is a second class of that person. Your originality is manifested when you find the place. Next verse. Verse 18. This is what Jesus found. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Hmm. For he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To send forth as delivered those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed and broken down by calamity next verse 19 to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord the day when salvation and the free favors of god profusely abound verse 20 listen to what jesus said and he rolled up the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all in the synagogue were gazing attentively at him 21 and he began to speak to them and said what today your today starts when you discover purpose. Many of you are celebrating birthday. How, many, how old are you? 35. All right. That's nice. But your today has not started until you begin to walk in purpose. He said today, this scripture has been fulfilled. In other words, I am come as a fulfillment of this prophecy. What prophecy are you fulfilling? Your walk upon the earth is supposed to be a fulfillment of a prophecy. Are you listening to me? What prophecy are you fulfilling? 
for many of us all that we desire is to just say Lord bring a man now to marry me am I not getting old and we believe that that is all to our life but I want you to know that there is more say there is more say I was born for a reason yes you are Jeremiah chapter 1 let's look at what God had to tell Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 4 Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 4 are you getting blessed tonight Jeremiah chapter 1 then the word of the Lord came to me Jeremiah saying now this was Jeremiah he was a great prophet born to be a great prophet Jeremiah brought the lamentations and caused the nation of Israel to walk in the path of the Lord but he did not know that that was his divine destiny in Christ until it was revealed to him verse 4 okay verse verse 4 please then the word of the Lord came to me saying verse 5 before I formed you can we read it together one to read before I formed you in the womb I knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument and before you were born I separated you and set you apart consecrating you and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations he said what before your father and your mother came together you see why I say you are not a biological accident because I don't care who your father is and who your mother is and how you came he said before you were formed in your mother's womb he said I knew you oh he knows my name that's what the Bible says he knows my every thought he sees each tear that falls and he hears me when Brother, do you realize that before you were born, it has been written concerning you? In other words, heaven met. Come on, let me have somebody, just anybody. Let me have somebody. Bridget, God bless you. That means when it was time for Bridget to come upon the earth, the Holy Spirit didn't just go on an errand. And suddenly, he just found out that, ah, Bridget is coming. And he said, hey, what do we do? Let her just come. We'll find something. No, no. It was well calculated by heaven. They created a vacuum in the earth and planted Bridget to be the solution, that prophecy, to reveal that dimension of God. And they said, now you can go. And she appeared. But let me tell you something. Your coming upon the earth does not mean that you are going to walk in purpose. You must discover it. Hallelujah. Years ago, I carried my Bible, I carried my jota, and I ran to the dam, ABU dam. Many of you only go there for picnic. We didn't go there for business. Destiny discovering business. And you go there, I will buy buns and yogurt, 30 naira, and buns. And I will sit down there and flog it out with destiny. And say, Lord, I cannot be a non-entity. There's got to be something about my life. My father didn't tell me what I was born for. Did your father tell you what you were born for? I hope you will tell your children what they were born for. Because it's the responsibility of every father. Before you get your wife pregnant, sit down and say, Lord, what am I doing? Who is coming? What is his destiny? That's what Manoah did. He called the angel. He said, come and tell us. What will be the destiny of this child and what we are supposed to do? And he said, he shall be a Nazarene. Let no razor touch his head. He shall be a judge over the house of Israel. Hallelujah. So when you realize that you were born for a reason, it will change your outlook about life. Suddenly, do you know that everyone was created with inferiority complex by default? I don't care whether your father is the president of this country. I have seen great people with inferiority complex. 
I've seen beautiful ladies, handsome guys with inferiority complex. I've seen millionaires with inferiority complex. Inferiority complex can be tried to solve. You can try to solve it with different things. But only your purpose kills it once and for all. So, you don't solve inferiority complex by prayer. You solve it by discovery. Are you listening to me? When you find your place, that I have a place in life and that you have discovered it and you will walk in that path. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that you have a purpose in Christ? How many of you believe you have an assignment? This discovery helps you because many of us have role models that are not in the area of our purpose and we are struggling and sweating i must be a fashion designer the grace is not there it's not part of your job description in destiny and you are suffering and sweating i must be this thing you are trying and somebody comes to work with ease with the grace that came upon his life are you listening to me there are many of you i must do music this music is selling i must do it nobody is buying your album there are no helpers there are no partners no errands and all to hold your hand you are suffering nobody likes what you are doing you are saying i must steal that's the one i want tonight i want you to know that your place in life is not determined by you it's determined by god so outside of god there is no discovery of purpose there is only ambition Are you listening to me? The Bible says he opened the book and he found his place. Without the opening of the book, you will never find your place in life. There are so many people that have been crying, Lord, what am I here for? Let me tell you something. The danger of complex is unimaginable. If you think this message is not important, wait until you get out of this place and you will see how confused your life will be. Today you want to be like your brother. Tomorrow you want to be like this person. This swaying life, purpose gives you stability. Hallelujah. Very quickly, how do I discover my assignment? How do I discover my purpose? Now that you know you were born for a reason, I know that many of you have heard it, born for a reason, born for a reason. But it has not dawned on many of you that you should discover the specifics about your life. Don't say I'm too young. Joash was age 8 when he became the king of Israel. Number one, to discover your purpose, There are certain parameters that God has put together. Number one, your potentials. Say after me, potentials. The word potential comes from the word potent. That means it's inherent. An ability that has not been tapped yet. Hallelujah. Your potential is a pointer to your purpose. It's a pointer to your assignment. Your potentials are inherent abilities. Make sure you write the word inherent. They are not gotten by impartation. You came with it. Hallelujah. Listen, look up please. There are some of you here. From the day you were born. From the day you were born. As a baby. Every time you hear music. As a little child you just go and stand close to the TV. And if they want to take you away you are crying. Hallelujah. From age seven, you started singing in children's choir. You were the youngest here. They couldn't stop you. Your parents refused that you would not go for Riazza. The moment they were stopping you, one uncle came and said, Lila, I used to go and set the sound in the church. I'll be taking the person. Every time you turn towards that area, destiny seems to open up doors for you. Potentials. Hallelujah. From young, the leadership mandate, not just ministry mandate, not just apostolic mandate. Everywhere I went in my life, I was a leader. 
There are some of you like that. Class monitor. Class one, two, three, four, five. You are the last born in your family, but your father will call you and say, we're about to make a decision. What do you think is making him do that? Hmm. Are you listening to me? Potential. Your inherent ability. Your inherent ability given by God. Many of you have seen it. It's glaring before you every day. What are your potentials? Don't say I don't have any. Are you joking? Let me list some of them for you. It will shock you. Because many of you do not think they are called potentials. There are some of you that are exceptionally beautiful. Ladies. What do you think that is? Potential. Do you know in the book of Esther, the nation of Israel was saved by the potential of beauty? There was no prophet that prophesied anything there. There was no man of God that turned snake into a rod or anything. It was a, the beauty of a woman took her to the palace. Are you listening to me? And she obtained favor and brought salvation to the nation of Israel. What of your creativity? There are some of you who are so creative. You have a thousand ways of doing the same thing. Are you listening to me? Creativity. Very important. Music for some of you. When we are suffering to train our voice, drinking ginger and honey, you take cold water, you break all the rules of music, but you sing well. You pitch to a point that you, even you, you are surprised. Let me tell you one proof that is your potential. There is ease and grace in that area. There is no struggle. You like it so much, even if they don't pay you, you do it with joy. While others are crying, you cannot believe that they are crying about this thing. Hallelujah. Every time you see Jimmy and, and um, assistant music director, David, Every time you see them, give them one minute, they are playing a new song. And you see them laughing. I get so bored with what they are doing, but you see them nodding. I mean, they are just enjoying it. He said, have you had this? I just had this recent download by, by um, John Picky, And they are playing and dancing, you know, and just enjoying themselves and are leaping. I'm saying, can these guys get out of here? There are many of you when you are about to sleep and they just tune to a fashion channel. You just wipe sleep from your eyes and you can sit down till the next day. While we are sleeping, then when they tune Benny Hinn, I'm watching, I'm happy, I'm laughing. You are angry because I'm not giving you room to tune to the channel. You are like, what is it? Benny Hinn, such a boring man. You are my hiding place. Yes, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Listen, I hope you are getting my point. There are many of you from the day you came to ABU, you love your class. Even when you finish exam, you just go and sit down there and you are smiling. And your colleagues, listen. Listen, listen, listen. Your colleagues do not even understand. Are you listening to me? You have started becoming ashamed. They've called you everything. Bookworm, prof. It's not like you like it. You can't stop it. Even when you are about to sleep, after 10 minutes, you just touch your book and just use your touch and glance through something briefly before you close it. And your roommate is saying, this guy is frustrating us. Could it be that there is a voice in prison crying inside of you, wanting to find expression? There are many of you who are leaders. When you were age five, you were behaving as if you were 15 years old. When your colleagues are playing, you sit down and be thinking like this. Your father will say, what kind of stupid boy are you? Your colleagues are playing, eating sand. And he said, daddy, no, we can't eat sand. And your father is saying, Jesus Christ. I be this guy is the incarnate of one elderly man. You see a small, have you seen little children like that? Very mature. Something touches their clothes and they're even cleaning it and they're careful. You want to go and bath them at age three or four. They are saying no. They just wait outside. You are like, what in the world is happening to this generation? Potential. Your ability. Are you listening to me? 
Your first assignment tonight is write the list of all your potentials. Write it. I wrote it. Hallelujah. I knew I had the call of God upon my life. I didn't know how it was going to start. And when God was teaching me this, all of this drama happened in the dam. God told me, write it. I said, sing it. Oh, then I had a beautiful voice. I had not laid it as opportunity cause for ministry. I had a beautiful voice. Hallelujah. But you can't serve two masters at the same time. Hallelujah. That's why God brought a beautiful worship team. If you preach the way I'm doing, your voice cannot be smooth. Hallelujah. And I wrote singing. And then I wrote teaching. Oh, I love teaching. I love teaching. I can sit down. Do you know I was so obsessed about teaching? I will soon reveal many of your secrets to you. I will lock myself sometimes in the room. And you imagine yourself teaching. How many of you? And you teach so well. And now, my own is not teaching in class. I'm teaching the word. And I'm teaching. And I imagine myself talking to people. And I tell you, as I'm doing it, the anointing of God comes truly. As if God is not playing. Say, if you like, be playing. You are doing rehearsal. Do you know this is how I learned how to preach? I would stand at the foundation. We had one empty foundation in our house. We wanted to start a construction. They're very, and I would stand. And I will imagine a crowd of people. And I will tell them, turn with me to the book of this. Little did I know I was killing the bear and the lion in the wilderness. Many of you, every time you are in your room, you just lock your room and put two chairs. And you say, um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are on to ministry today. Aha. Uh -huh. Many of you say, hey, it's not word of knowledge. It's word of wisdom. I know it should happen to you. Hallelujah. And you have passion. Every time you tell your roommates, they laugh at you. But there is something crying inside of you. The next thing, your passion. Your passion. Your passion. What is it that you would do if you were not paid? There are many of you that love some things. It's not the issue of money. There are things in my life that I do with passion. For instance, what I'm doing. Oh boy, I can preach till tomorrow morning. I tell you, if I'm tired, it's just for your sake. I can preach till morning. Once you make a mistake of giving me this mic, even if you don't give me a Bible, God recorded small of it in my head. And that one that I have, I will preach it out. Sometimes when I'm going for night vigil, people just pity me. I say, are you joking? I'm enjoying myself seriously. The exact same feeling you receive in the kitchen is what I'm receiving now. Hallelujah. Passion. What do you have passion for? Do you realize that many of you are doing things you don't have passion for? You are angry. You are frustrated. Stop it. You must not do it. You are doing it because you belong to friends who are doing it. Hallelujah. Stop frustrating yourself and begin to pursue the areas that you have passion. Because there is grace there. The last point, discovering your purpose. Steps to discover your purpose. The last point is the place of your pain and your anger. The place of consistent pain and anger. Everywhere you keep receiving consistent pain and anger, there is an assignment there for you. Are you listening to me? Moses, the, the grace for a deliverer was upon him. And when he saw that his people were being oppressed, what happened? He was angry to a point that he killed a man. Later in the years, he would be the deliverer of those people. There are things that make me angry. I hate it when I see that people do not love God. I hate it when people disrespect God and don't have a passion for the things of the Spirit. I hate it when people do not live by the principles of the kingdom. I hate it when Satan oppresses people. I hate seeing sick people. I hate poverty. I hate poverty with my life. I hate the effect it has created on people. I hate the effect that on society. My anger, my pain. Many of you have been rejecting your pain. Will you go back and revisit your pain right now? When you were young, you were abused. 
when you were age 12 you were you hate men you hate everybody would it be that there is an assignment for you there are you listening to me there are many of you who just sit down and you get concerned about people's relationship even if it's not your business they have insulted you you are tired you have gone to repent before god but you find yourself there again could it be that you have the grace to be a life coach to help people hallelujah there are many of you when you were born anything they give you you give it out anything they give you sweet you are crying but you give somebody else and your mother will call you and, and slap your head and say oh Lord, no, I'm, I'm training a dull child and you cannot even help it could it be that you are a kingdom financier could it be that there is grace for you to release and equip the body your pain what have you gone through in life do you think it's a waste are you listening to me your pain has grace let me tell you something about pain every time you conquer a situation in the spirit authority is given unto you to bring others out so moses feels the pain and the tragedy that's why see i went many of you don't know why i i i trust god and contend for the anointing for miracles and to heal the sick i went to i've shared with you the challenge i had look i've gone through sickness in this my life Many of you say, what kind of, yeah, now every time miracles, it's not your fault. The day you are sick and the doctor tells you they cannot do anything about your situation, you will see the relevance of what we are doing. Hmm. Hallelujah. Grace. Your pain can become the testimony. So write your pain. What are the things you have gone through in life that you are angry about? This is a workshop tonight. Make sure you are writing, please. What are the things you've gone through? There are many of you who you have suffered inferiority, you have suffered complex to a point that you don't know what to do with yourself again. Could it be that you are sent as a deliverer to many like you? Hmm. Hallelujah. Where are the next Steve Jobs, Warren Buffett, the next world changers who will take this kingdom for the king? Your purpose. Have you discovered your purpose? I read that book by Dr. Miles Munro, Discovering Your Potentials. It changed my life forever. I started getting angry with my life and I said, Lord, I cannot be like this. I cannot be like this. I gave myself a time space that I must discover why I'm on earth. I refused to celebrate my birthday. I told myself until I discover my call. There are many of you, you have the biggest party and you don't know why you are on earth. One year before your birthday, you have started planning. As soon as you finish this one, you are, you are planning the next one. You, you handle drinks. You, you handle the hotel we are booking. And you have no idea while you are dancing, whether it's Christian or secular, that's not my business. So long as you do not, you have no right to celebrate your birthday until you have discovered why you are living. There are many guys that don't know what they're on earth for. And your eyes will not allow ladies to move peacefully. Any lady you look, you are just smiling. Do you not realize that she's supposed to be a help me? When you are going out with her, where are you going? To where? We are going out. Uh -huh. To where? Do you know where you are going? Take what I'm saying seriously tonight. Do you know where you are going? Hallelujah. The first thing God did is to reveal his assignment in the garden. Then when Adam began to walk, God saw a need for Eve. Guys, if you have not discovered your purpose, I tell you, relationship will kill you. Because you will not have direction. 
a day will come there's nothing to talk about again you have talked about all the cartoons you have talked about the ladies hair what else do you talk about the lady keeps asking you questions you cannot answer so where are we going so i can start planning my life in light of where you are showing me and you say let's just be going even abraham god told him let's go Hallelujah. Discovering your potentials. Listen. When you discover your potentials, in it, you will find your uniqueness. This is the secret of self-confidence. Your uniqueness is not in your similarity with others. I mean, your, your, your greatness in life is not in your similarity. I'm not the only preacher in the world but there's nobody that does it like me i have my way of doing my thing hallelujah i have found my place in the ministry i'm fulfilled in finding my place i'm exploring the paths that god has earmarked for me many ministries are frustrated because they do not have vision they don't have purpose and so they are trying to do everything that's why you see all kinds of people today they are apostles tomorrow they are prophets later on they say Kai, is it that i made an evangelist i'm not very sure they are everything you tell him what are you, you say i'm a multiple talented minister what is the meaning of that hallelujah you find people in life let me tell you something you cannot be everything Many of you have written what you want to do. And what you want to do is what the whole world will be doing. You will die. You better cancel it and find out what God wants you to do. Say, I was born for a reason. Listen to me. You are sitting down to, to listen to me by grace because I discovered my potentials. Are you listening to me? Can we sit down tomorrow and listen to you because you have discovered your potentials? When I was in the dam crying and praying, there was nobody. Nobody was calling me Apostle or Joshua Selman or whatever. But I knew that that discovery held the key to the fulfillment of my life. I tell you, I live a fulfilled life. I've not started a journey yet, too, but I'm enjoying the fulfillment. To be in the heart and the center of what God wants me to do. No competition. That's why I don't have enemies in my life. When I said, are you joking? Your enemies are the people you have been trying to, you are angry because they are walking in their path and then you are, you are wondering what to do with your own life. And every time you see them, their zeal frustrates you because they are committed to do some things and you are wondering, why am I not having that same kind of zeal? When you find out your assignment, I tell you, you will not sleep because of it. Hallelujah. When you discover your potentials, when you discover your abilities, they are pointers to your destiny. Although discovery and revelation is progressive, but when you have the tools, it begins to guide you. Are you listening to me? It begins to guide you. If you see someone holding a stethoscope, who is that? You cannot say that's a carpenter. Are you listening to me? A carpenter has nothing to do with a stethoscope. When you see someone holding a scissors, holding needle and thread, who is that person? That's a tailor. Is that a caterer? So when you begin to gather your tools, what happens? It begins to give you direction. When you put those tools together, you find out that these tools are leading me to the ministry. They are leading me to the ministry. Every time you stand and you see sinners, you cry. Whenever you watch Reinhard Bonke, you cry. Something in you. Every time you see Jake's on stage, something tells you, there is a place for you in destiny. There are many of you, every time you see me preach, something in you tells you you will be standing to hold this mic like this. Every time I'm shouting it, people are laughing, but you are not laughing. There is something attracting you. Years ago, every time I saw Benny Hinn and I saw certain ministers of God, sometimes I will go back crying. I will, how many of you have had that kind of feeling? You will cry for days, you cannot tell exactly why you are crying. But you are crying anyway. It's a cry of passion. You must discover your purpose. 
when you discover your, your potentials, what do you do? Listen, the next thing is you begin to develop it. Develop it. Develop it. Refine it. I beg you, take what I'm teaching you tonight seriously. Develop it. Develop it. The process of developing your potentials is a very difficult process. This is where the boys are separated from the men. Because we live in a generation where many people do not want responsibility. We believe that God is supposed to do everything. But the moment, let me tell you something. That when people say they are idle, it's because they have not found what to work on. Your purpose will occupy you 24 hours will pass, you will not know. There are some of you, when you sit down and there is, you have written over five books. When you sit down writing it, you sit down by 4 a.m. in the morning. And when you check the time, it's 8 p.m. in the night. And your colleagues come and say, you are here, passion. Passion is dangerous. It, it brings obsession. You cannot stop. Hallelujah. Develop it. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace. To develop my potential. See. Men of purpose. Are not people who are idly wasting their time. There are many people. Let me say it again. There are so many people. Wasting their time every day. Visitation to visitation, room to room. Your job is you don't know what to do with your time. You're just moving. If they say, Where are you going? They say, Let's go to this, this place. You say, Okay. When you are a man of purpose, there is direction in your life. You value your time. You know that your time is precious. The greatest gift God gave you, aside from His Son and the Holy Spirit, is the gift of time. Every other thing you will do is in time. Many of us sit down. And you are sleeping from morning till night. You just check and say 5 p.m. Ah, ah, which kind of siesta did I have today? Purpose will occupy you. Your purpose will help you to know the kind of books to buy. Listen, many of you have made friends with people who have broken your heart because you do not know your purpose. When you find your purpose, you will see a group of people that you belong to. He told, he said, when you go, you will step into a band of prophets and you will begin to prophesy like them. Many of you do not know the kind of groups to belong. Even in church, many of you don't know what departments to serve in because you do not know your purpose. Many of you don't have friends today because everywhere you're going, you don't fit. When you step into the place that has the oil of your purpose, you will fit perfectly. That's why many of you got into mistakes in your relationship and got into big trouble. You know why? Because for many people, out of that desperation, to find a friend that can appeal to you, Suddenly, you just see a brother. How great he is. He just ad lips and something attracts you. And then you misunderstand that attraction. And you land into trouble. Are you getting me? When you discover your purpose. See, the moment you begin to develop your purpose. You begin to develop your potentials. Self-confidence begins to come. Not pride. Self-confidence. Suddenly, you find out that I used to be afraid of telling people where I'm coming from. I used to be afraid of telling people my father was a carpenter. Now it doesn't matter anymore. Let me tell you something. When, you know, when I was in primary school, into secondary school, there's a hairstyle, punk. How many of you remember? Punk. If the barber messes up that punk, he can spoil your face. And the ladies will not like you. So then, because we did not discover our purpose, that was our obsession. When you go to the barber saloon, the barber better don't play with you. Especially when it's time to go to the church. The pastor's daughter is there. There are many VIPs there. You can't go and mess up yourself. But when I began to walk in purpose, I just found out that I'll go to the barbing saloon and I'm thinking, I'm just telling the guy, just clean my hair, make it nice. There are many things that are occupied. Do you know that many things you think about is because you don't have any other thing to think about? When you truly are occupied with purpose, you just stand and say, ah, am I sure it's my, it's my, it's my shoe? Many of you are too meticulous. Guys carry comb in their pocket. 
you are moving and you carry it. nonsense when you find purpose even if your head is scattered because you are thinking it will not matter again yes i will say it again yes see a guy behaving like a lady just be nice yeah. uh -huh. hallelujah purpose when you find your purpose you are grateful to god you live a life of gratitude you stop being angry. let me tell you something when you find your purpose your potentials your place in life do you know what it will do to you it will make you to honor and value those who have found their own because you will see that it's not child's play many people disrespect the anointing upon people because you have not found your place so you don't know the level of discipline that it takes to get to that point. When you see the minister sit down, it's easy to look at them and say, I beg you, Jare. This guy self, oh, is just, I have the ability to do that same kind of thing. Because, you know, when God calls you, you feel you are calling to the ministry. You touch three or four people, they fall. They say, ah, ah, it's Jake's not doing it. Then, as you begin to progress in purpose, when you begin to encounter certain things, hallelujah, and you begin to pray and build yourself, and after praying for hours and building yourself, you will see only grace you are seeing in the life of the people, you will start respecting them, and say, so uneasy lies the head that wears this crown. Let me give you a little story about us. Do you know we don't watch films? There are only few times it's even these days we start watching Christian films. It's not like it's a taboo. It's the sacrifice for the anointing. You come to visit me, you will watch worship songs and messages and you will read books and you will be tired. No wonder you are antisocial, but we are still anointed. Are you listening to me? When you discover your purpose, and you begin to walk in it. I tell you every day as I progress in ministry, every day I keep saluting the fathers of faith that have gone ahead of us because I know that that's not grace. Managing people, becoming successful is one thing. Managing success is another thing. When you become a minister, everything about your life is a subject of discussion. It takes stamina and audacity to move through. Are you listening to me? When you begin to walk in purpose, you will respect people. Suddenly you will turn. As you are becoming a man, you will turn and look at your father and say, Hey, so this is why my father used to shout. He's really not a bad man. Now that I'm becoming a man, I'm finding out that there are responsibilities that can make men become Draculas. So that's why my father has become what he is right now shouting and yelling at everybody now you are collecting money from home many of you mommy giving me this daddy give me this the moment you step into responsibility for yourself suddenly you get up and find out that nobody's going to send you money and you drop an application for a job and maybe the job is not coming and you sit back a brother calls you and says sorry brother can you send me two thousand at that point, you start having a foretaste of what your father is going through that you are insulting him for. Listen, discovery of purpose makes you respect people. Are you listening to me? If you do not discover purpose, you will never honor people who have gone ahead of you because you will trivialize their sacrifice. You will trivialize it. You are insulting your father for not having a jeep, but he has a house that you are inside. The day you are about to get married, and you go out, you have your money, but you can't find a house, you will salute your father. Are you listening to me? The day they make you a class monitor, and your class members want to beat you because you did not advocate for them, for assignment, you say, oh, so what of those who are leaders over thousands? Many of you who sit down and just wish and say, hey, I wish I was Joshua Selman speaking to hundreds and thousands of people in Kono. This guy is enjoying, you know, they are giving him water. Please, come and sit down and take the water. I promise you, listen, I give you three days. You will cry and run with my anointing and bring it back and give me. I promise you. Hallelujah. 
You see Jankwa prophesying, you are laughing. Kai, how can he know about your life? The day you tell somebody something and they lock you for it, that day you will say whether you really want to be a prophet or not. Are you listening to me? Discovery of purpose makes you to honor the grace upon people. Every day, I keep respecting. Let me tell you something. My outlook for my father and my mother changed when I started taking responsibility for my life. I knew it was not child's play. With all the tongues I'm speaking, with all of this, I say so. Now, they were not filled with the Holy Ghost. They were not praying in tongues. They are not hearing what you are hearing, but they try to do what they have done. Many of you, after now, you need to go and send text messages to your parents and tell them you love them and you respect them. You have been insulting them and say only 10,000. He's not ashamed. His mate, the El Rufa is his classmate. Okay, very soon. Say you have told your father you marry in two years. Very soon, you will see what it means to be a man. You will see what it means to be a woman. Many of you who stand and speak to your mothers and just insult them and say, Mommy, let me tell you, I'm not a small girl again. No. Please don't insult I will wash you now. A small child poops in front of you and you're like, ah, ah, and you want to be a mother. Huh. Welcome to the world of reality when every childishness is washed away by time and wisdom. Hallelujah. Are you getting me? These messages that I preach are hard messages, but they are messages for those who are interested in their destiny. Not everybody likes me, and I understand that. But if you will listen, let me tell you something about a life. There is a difference between teaching and training. Are you listening to me? A teacher can share, but when you are being trained, when you are being coached, that's not the time to pamper you. Are you listening to me? That's not the time to pamper you. A coach presses you to bring out the best in you. And then when it's time for the race and you take first position, the sower and the reaper are both happy. Many of you may say, why is this guy always shouting? His messages are always hard. You will appreciate it. When you step out and see the difference between you and others, you will thank God for this word you are receiving today. Are you listening to me? You are receiving it free. But let me tell you, those who are not receiving it today will pay for it tomorrow. It will not be as free as it is today. Are you listening to me? They will pay for it. And many will pay. I'm not talking of paying with money. They will pay with time. They will pay with their tears to receive some of these truths. Say, I was born for a reason. I was born for a reason. I always told myself this. There is something about my life. I'm not a non-entity. I'm not a non-entity. Today, when I confess it, I know it is true. Look at what the Lord has done in my life. Do you know, every time I'm sharing with you this to the glory of God, I have seen the honor of God in my life. I have seen the blessings of God. I saw my head boy today. He was two years my senior. When I was in SS1, in secondary school, he was the senior prefect. I saw him today. I saw him on bike. And he was just running and he was going to discuss with somebody. And tears filled my eyes. I think it was IK who was driving me. I said, once upon a time, this guy was my head boy. Today, he calls me sir. What takes a man from a place where he's nobody? Are you listening to me? To a place of prominence. The Lord has honored me in my little life. Within this country, outside this country, I have seen the mercies of God. I have seen the grace of God. The things that people run after God has honored me. This is what I want your life to at least become. My greatest goal is for the least of you to be better than me. There is no reason why you should be the same as me. If you become the same as me, I have failed. My prayer, my cry, Every time I pray for you, I say, Lord, let the least among us be as great as them. I hope you appreciate what you are receiving. You see, let me tell you something. There are many of you that do not know the sacrifice of bringing the word of God to you. It's easy. Speakers are all arranged. Are you listening to me? Chairs are arranged. 
all people pray and you just come in and stroll in and sit down let's hear what he has to say ah. in the days of Samuel when the word was cast many of you God is intercepting your life because you did not receive this training from home many of you came from every different kinds of backgrounds but God is intercepting your life to change you I hope you value it I hope you take it serious my son the Bible says pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from your heart keep them in the midst of your heart yes ago let me tell you this I shared with some of my classmates what I'm sharing with you many of them laughed at me many of them thought we were just being ambitious and being stupid people today by the grace of God and the sure mercies of David the gap between me and my contemporaries is far by far are you listening to me everything I spoke and I prophesied I have seen a major part of it today in my life that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled of the word of life we declare unto you in 2006 when we were leading a people for crusade they insulted us they called us all kinds of names but by the grace and the mercy of God today you are a proof of our apostleship if it is true that we are called if it is true that we are anointed you are the testament of the fact that God is at work in this place but tomorrow it will be your turn are you listening to me tomorrow the stage will be opened and it will be your turn to bring the word of the Lord to the nations in ministry in business in life whatever you are going through today endure it develop your potentials don't be too quick to start manifesting uh-uh uh-uh David killed the bear he killed the lion but he went back to the secret place do you know compared to where God is taking me I am still under rehearsals I keep telling people I'm still under training you have not seen the best of me yet uh-uh what you are seeing today is the prophecy of yesterday tomorrow you will know what I'm speaking today I've seen many of you have seen yourself in visions every time you sleep you see yourself a leader over others a ministry over churches there are many of you here there are churches and ministries apostolic ministries prophetic ministries music ministries financial ministries businesses locked up inside of you waiting for manifestation there are many of you you are the next media moguls you are the next Oprah Winfrey's and the rest you are the people who will come and interview us you are the ones who will change the course of history do you believe this about yourself I am motivating you tonight we are going to pray and that prayer is a cry you are going to say Lord help me I don't care whether you are young or old many people covering their purpose hear me friends if you do not discover your purpose you will join the queue of frustration that is going on in Nigeria many jobless people parading the streets of Nigeria they graduated with first class they graduated with two one they have nothing to do with their lives I hope you know listen to me I hope you know many of our parents who are suffering today they they are filled with the Holy Ghost hello but in spite of their being filled with the Holy Ghost in spite of their Bible study they are still suffering pastor Chris said something that I respect so much he said you cannot park in the same parking lot of your parents and expect a different result that's why God is intercepting your life I made up my mind that I was not going to follow the road of a failure are you listening to me right now is the time to sow the Bible says he that weepeth bearing precious seeds listen what will kill many of you is convenience you like convenience too much that Christianity of on I'm not saying I'm not against comfort but let the days come many of you see me wearing suits today and you want to go and buy my kind of suit find out what I was doing when I was I say it with all humility you see ministers stand and you want to do what they are doing 
you want to eat food in Shagalinku, instead of you to carry that 500 naira and buy a book. Do you know one of the biggest problems we have in the church? Our fathers have lied to us. They have refused, listen, they have refused to open up their clothes and show us their scars. They hide their scars and they tell us, just speak it and it will happen. But I'm not hiding it. I hope you appreciate it. Many people lie to you. They say, ah, I've never suffered in my life. I just moved and things began to happen. Hallelujah. Are you joking? Are you playing? For there is a scar. Paul said, let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the mark of Christ. There is a mark that you receive now. Even Jesus Christ has the mark that brought him greatness. Those scars are still in his hands. Don't be ashamed of your scars. Don't let new creation teaching make you fool yourself and be ashamed of your scars. Many of you, because of your testimony, you drink Gary, keep drinking it and saying, my life is better. There is something in my life. I cannot afford it today. I'm not ashamed of my one trouser. I will not be covetous. No, no. I cannot afford 300 Naira cream. I will use the homemade Vaseline. But as I'm using it, I'm saying, Lord, I thank you. My destiny will blossom and will show up one day. If you came tonight to hear a word that will change you, this is it. I'm preaching tonight from the depth of my heart. And I hope you appreciate what I'm telling you. You may not be able to make your hair. Don't envy anybody. You don't know how they got there. Just pay the price. Pay the price. He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds. I made up my mind 10 years ago that I was not going to be poor. So don't see me today and some of the blessings that God is helping me. I didn't make the resolution last year. You will frustrate yourself if you want to be like me in three days. Are you listening to me? Somebody came to T.D. Jakes and said, I want the anointing upon your life. He said, you are such an influential man. New York's best time, his best seller. I want the anointing on your life. And he knelt down. And T.D. Jakes says, Lord, send him tribulation. Lord, send him persecution. For every time you ask God for the throne, you will see a Goliath standing in front of you. If you cannot kill that Goliath, you are not going to the throne. I assure you, friends, many people will speak against the message I'm teaching you today. And they'll say, I'm not helping you. But the future will tell. Are you listening to me? We are going to pray, but let me just land something in my spirit. Pay the price. I do not see many people who are paying the price. Many of us don't pay the price in the place of prayer. Many of us don't pay the price in the place of giving. How many of you, you said God has called you to be a kingdom financier. How many books on finance have you read? I assure you, I don't care if a gallon of oil is poured on your head. You will never become a millionaire God's way. No, sir. It doesn't work that way. You want to get married next year. How many books on fatherhood have you read? How many books on godly parenting have you read? Am I challenging you in this place? You want to get into a relationship? How many books about men have you read? You think a man is another woman? God has told you you are a leader. Why don't you become an uncommon leader? Go and goggle principles of godly leadership. Buy tapes. Buy books. You are sitting down, mid-semester break. You hear that there is a leadership summit happening in Abuja. Quickly, carry your remaining 3,000 and run there. Go and sit down quietly. And listen to generals of the faith speak. Before you criticize them, listen to them. You have not gotten to where they are getting, so shut your mouth and just listen first. No matter how much mistake they are making, it's not by trial and error they establish those levels of grace. You have something to learn. Are you listening to me? Sit down under that anointing. See, many of you, I, let me tell you something. There are many of you who, I pray that you don't regret the opportunities you have today. Are you listening to me? Sometimes you see the ministers, they wear jeans like you, they laugh like you. Be careful so you don't get too familiar. You are not standing in the same realm. If I were you, I would run one day and pin one minister and buy him Zobo and say, teach me something about leadership and refuse say i will not let you go many of you don't know how to press for your destiny are you listening to me 
go around Zaria, go and Google. Who are the ministers and the leaders that have displayed the quality of what you want? God has told you you are going to have a miracle ministry. You are just sitting down and lying down. You think the Holy Ghost will come upon you just like that. Hallelujah. Many of you may need to contribute money. You and your roommate, contribute money and buy my TV and put in your room. People say, ah, enjoyment. You know what you are pursuing. Are you listening to me? You are not dressing well. You have one shirt, but you have a set light and you have a TV. People say, what kind of enjoyment is that? You know what you are pursuing. While those messages are playing, you are saying, Lord, I receive. There is grace I receive. Are you listening to me? Go and buy tapes, buy MP3s, worship people. Refuse average in your life. Refuse it. From class, run and go somewhere. See, I challenge you. See, I am on my knees begging you. Listen to me. I'm on my knees begging you. If you take what I'm saying seriously, you will be a champion in life. But if you play with what I'm saying, you will see how messed up your life will become. Hallelujah. I'm preaching tonight from my heart. That which I have, I give unto you. Enough of failures in life. It takes sacrifice. You will cry, oh, let me tell you, I'm not the kind of person that will preach that gospel to you. Your crying is not because you are backsliding. He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds you are holding your seat lord enough is it's not much that is coming but i will keep giving i will keep tightening. i will support your house lord just one shirt but i will give i have two shirts but i will still sow one lord i am serious i am diligent in the place of prayer people may insult me but i continue my roommates say i don't have perfume my body is smelling but let me be a prayerful smelling person i am still praying oh lord i keep praying and then your glory will break forth like the morning and you will rise a day will come everything you are longing for you will get it at a platter of gold did i ever know that a day will come in my life when i'll not need to think of what to eat again those days are here are you listening to me the car you don't have today stop admiring and claiming cars sit down and start working on yourself every car that passes, i claim it far 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 foul that gospel that they taught you better repent of it this night that's covetousness not claiming you sit down and partner with the Holy Ghost and you will become a champion. Stay with your Bible in the place of, of, of sacrifice. Listen, I want to see a situation where from tomorrow morning, from this night, all of us are working. Wake up in the morning. Write something about your life. Don't waste your time. Any, see, your enemy is the person that comes to distract you. Don't be afraid to tell people, now is not the time to gist. You are walking. When you are walking, somebody just comes, ah, I so. You just smile and tell them, sorry, but I'm doing a little work. And I say, eh, stupid people. They always try to claim they are serious. If you are ashamed of your reputation, you will not be great in life. You must die to be a champion. Great men are those who have died in themselves. Paul said, I die daily. Hallelujah. One last point to discovering your purpose is service. You will never be a leader until you become a good servant. Many people see me today and think I was just crossing my legs. And then the anointing just came, bam. And God said, Josh, get up. Here is suit. Wear quickly and start ministry. You think so? I shared my story. When I used to play, there's a man called Reverend Emmanuel Amechi. I don't know where that man is. Power Praise Chapel then, his church. I used to play keyboard for him. 1996. I would play keyboard for him. Let me tell you something. The only thing I remember them doing for me once was during the launching of, his, uh, of this. They gave me one cassette and one Fanta. That's the only thing they did. For those of you who do something, say, the way we are singing, we are, we are serving in Koinonia Ushim, they are supposed to be paying us, so say you are rich, leave. Please leave. We are looking for serious destiny. Don't you know that you are learning your destiny free of charge? See, you kill yourself, and it happens a lot to musicians. You have not gone anywhere, you are saying they should pay me. Don't you know that you are learning? Hallelujah. 
when you find yourself serving in a church or in a body, never complain. See it as an opportunity to learn. It will give you discipline. Are you listening to me? Discipline. You cannot be a leader until you are a good servant. You must be able to serve. You will learn the discipline and the regiments of service. Many of you, as you are serving, one day they will give you, they will give you an opportunity. They will say, now, um, Josiah, please help us to lead prayers five minutes. That will be the first time you will be uncovering the grace of God upon your life. You who has thought that you are not anointed, that day you just stand. Five minutes prayer will change the atmosphere. Suddenly, it leaves you with a question. How many of you has that happened to? Your faculty fellowship, they just say, there's a choir. Uh, Femi, just lead uh, 20 minutes praise and worship. And you lead praise and worship and people dance. After the choir, they keep singing your song. And then you start discovering that there's something about you. Service. Service is the place of discovery. Many of you who are not serving in the house of God, you call that smartness. You are cheating yourself. You learn a lot of things. Are you listening to me? You serve God. Take responsibility for your life. Stop insulting your father and mother and say, my father was smarter, I'll be better. If my mother was this, I'll be better. If they were sending me more pocket money, no. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Stop living a realm that you have not yet gotten to you will get there ladies you will not have to change your weave on every two two days you don't have that kind of money stop frustrating yourself a day will come you will own a boutique you will own a spa a spa center you can change your hair every day stop killing yourself right now the brothers know you are laboring to enter your rest and they appreciate it hallelujah and for the guys, do your best. Stop borrowing clothes from everybody so that you will be smart. Be contented with what you have. Say, Kai, that lady looked at my leg when we were talking the last time. I beg, help me with your canvas. Why must you pretend? You borrow car, you borrow Blackberry, you borrow everything. You don't know how to use it. You put yourself under pressure. You carry 50,000 that God bless you with. I need to buy a BV. This guy is BV. Don't sit down and press for your destiny. What is it about a Blackberry that, that you cannot get? Are you listening to me? I'm challenging you tonight. Away with childlessness. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. I acted like a child. When you become a man, you lay aside childish things. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Bless the Lord for tonight. Manda baka Purpose and destiny. Dante Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Say, Lord, I bless you for this word. I receive your word with meekness. I receive your word with gladness. Yes. I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Pray. Say, Lord, tonight I receive grace to discover my purpose. I refuse to be a non-entity. I stop wasting my life. I stop wasting my time. I pay the price. Pray. Lord, reveal to me what am I on earth for? Why am I here? Why did you bring me here? Mataka Patalabasa. Before you were formed, in your mother's womb i knew you i called you i separated you to be a prophet unto the nations and jeremiah said i am a young man he said i'm a young man god said no i will put my word in your mouth and you will declare don't be afraid of them 
Let entrepreneurs arise. Let apostolic ministries arise. Prophetic ministries arise. Evangelistic ministries arise. Let businessmen arise. Kingdom financiers arise. Life coaches arise. Come on, pray. Media giants arise. Educationists arise. In the name that is above every name. Managers arise. Pastors arise. Apostles arise. Prophets arise. Interior decoration giants, I call you arise. Kingdom caterers, arise. Sportsmen, arise. Kingdom celebrities, beauticians, consultants, the kingdom needs you. In the name of Jesus, arise. Scientists, arise. Manufacturers, arise. Music ministers, in the name of Jesus, arise. Come on, pray. I discover my assignment. I discover my assignment. In the name of Jesus, I find my place in life. I stop escorting men. I stop escorting men. I find my place. The place of glory, the place of victory, the place of breakthrough. No, I come in the volume of the book as it is written concerning me to do your will. Pray. I am not a nobody. My world will celebrate me. Prophesy to yourself. Nigeria will hear your voice. Africa will hear your voice. The Moses of our time, the Joshua's of our time, the Elijah's of our time. Rise up, generals. Rise up, generals. Pray. I find my place in life. I pay the price. I read the books, I pray, I give, I serve my way into glory. You are a celebrity, you are a champion. God will give you the fame, God will give you the grace, He will give you prosperity like you have never seen. He will give you anointing. The husband will come. The wife will come. But stay in the place of destiny. Stop giving excuses. Stop giving excuses. Repent tonight. Flimsy excuses. Stop giving excuses. Take responsibility over your life. Stop blaming the government. Stop blaming your parents. Stop blaming your background. Stop blaming your uncle. Take responsibility for your life. Come on, pray. Shake take a pata. Go support us, pata. Wake up, put us a prayer. Let the least among us be as mighty as David. You will preach this message to your congregations. You will preach this message to your children. You will preach this message to your business partners. You will preach this message. One day you will be on air. One day you will be on satellite. The world will hear you. You will make reference to this day. I open up the portals of destiny 
over your life. I open up the portals of purpose over your life. Let revelation come. Let revelation come. I prophesy to you, find your place. 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 There is a place for you. Only you. Only you. You are an answer. You are a solution to a problem. Don't rob us. Don't rob us. There is something about your life that our generation needs. Don't die with your gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While I say this, I want to say something important. But if you are coming here for the first time, for time's sake, please run out while I say this. If this is your first time, just walk out, we'll pray for you. While, I'm, while you are coming out, listen, everybody. The gift of a man. Please, if this is your first time, please come out while I'm speaking. The gift of a man. Make it room. Say after me, make it room. Say the gift of a man. The potentials of a man makes room for him and brings him before great people. Say the gift of a man brings him before great men. If you find your gift, you find your place in life. Once upon a time, I was a nobody, but the gift that the Lord has given has made room for me. That's why there is no boasting because it's the election of grace. Can we listen to you tomorrow? Can you stop giving excuses? All kinds of excuses. We live in a world where the youth in Nigeria there is no other place in the world where the youth shy away from responsibility like Nigeria. We run away from responsibility. That's why people like a God that does everything. No, sir. That kind of Christianity, we bury it in this place. Hallelujah. Write the following books, please. I know those of you who are here, they will remember. Please write the following books. Buy it. Check the library if they have the books. Get it. Discovering Your Potentials by Dr. Miles Munro. Discovering Your Potentials by Dr. Miles Munro. Discovering Your Potentials. Then Understanding Your Potentials still by Dr. Miles Munro. Understanding Your Potentials. God's Big Idea Still by Dr. Miles Munro. The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. The Purpose Driven Life, Rick Warren. The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. Have you written that? Oh dear, there is one on my mind right now. I just forgot. Lord, help me. I have to bring this out. Um, oh dear. I'm trying to remember. I just forgot it right now. Finishing strong. By who? Steve Farah. Finishing Strong. You need to read that book. Finishing Strong by Steve Farah. These books will help you. You can explore others. Go to Jordan Bookstore tomorrow. Wake Jordan from his house and say, I need my destiny. My destiny must move forward. Come and open your bookstore. Get these books. Sit down. Listen, some of you can form little groups among yourselves. 
instead of gisting and gossiping about people, sit down. Give yourself an assignment. Do you understand? You read Stephara's book. You read my small rose own. And then you come and have a little Bible study. There's nothing wrong. You edify yourself. It will drive away visionless people from your life. Turn your room into a place of vision. Don't allow anybody come into your room and use it as a place of gossip and backbiting and asking you useless questions. Do you like that guy? Tell him, look, I'm, I'm studying. If you are not going to help me in my destiny, please walk out. Thank you, Jesus. Please stretch your hands as we pray for those who are just coming. Thank you for coming. We love you. Thank you for spending time. I pray that tonight's meeting will change your life forever. It changed mine. We bless you with the blessings of the heavens. We bless you with the blessings of the earth. We declare in the name of Jesus that from tonight, you begin to walk in purpose. You begin to walk in the path of destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, every complex, every inferiority, everyone who has talked you down and made you feel like there is nothing about your life, I prophesy and I announce to you that tonight is the beginning of a great day. Those who have laughed at you will laugh with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate you. I'd like you to quickly follow the ushers. They'll have your information and they'll greet you. Dearly quickly. beloved, God bless you. I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline